All right, we are trying to create a good logo that is clear, engaging, and versatile. We have different approaches we can try. We're trying to make it pictorial so it doesn't require text to be recognizable and understood. We want it to be as engaging as possible. And that can mean a few different things, that it holds our attention with something simple, that it moves our eye in an interesting way, or it gives us a lot of information, right? And we want it to be in just black shapes to begin with, and then color can be added for more effect. The tool we're gonna to use for that is Adobe Illustrator. And so we brought our sketch into Adobe Illustrator, we've opened it up, and then just to remind you, we double clicked on the layer itself that we brought in and we clicked dim images to 50% and said, okay, that's called onion skinning. And then we locked it so we don't accidentally interact with that raster layer anymore. We make a new layer on top. And I called that my black vector shapes layer. And then I just used the shape tool and I used it a rounded rectangle tool. Now for every shape you make, this is just like what we did in, in uh, Photoshop for exercise two. For every sh shape you make, so here's an ellipse. Right, you choose its properties and you can see the shortcut for them right here. They're fill, and we just wanna use black shapes and that's all. We don't want any white shapes, just black shapes and transparency. And then you also have the stroke and the stroke you can make black and you can make wider and then you can make the fill empty, right? Which is different than white. How do you know it's different than white? Well, if you use the large selection tool, you can drag it off of your artboard and you'll see the gray come through, right? But I don't want you to think of um, your strokes as actual outlines, right? They are shapes too. They're just shapes that are made on the outside of your paths. And strokes can become a lot more interesting, right? We've seen how you can vary them, how you can play with them in different ways. And then you can do things like rotate them, just like in Photoshop, right? And stretch them. So since transforming, we get a transform box that allows us to scale it, right? But if we right click inside and do transform and do these others, they don't work the way we're used to in Photoshop. So instead, what we need to do to customize our shapes is to use if we're gonna use the shape tool to make shapes, right? Here we have an outline and here, or a, um, a stroke, and here we have a fill. We need to use the small selection tool to grab what are called anchor points. So this is a rounded rectangle. So it's got two points at each corner and then a curve that connects them. So if you click on the anchor point with the small selection tool, you'll see what's called the Bezier handle. And the Bezier handle allows you to change that curve. And you can always do Command Z. You can do Command Z back as many times as you like in Illustrator. But if you click on the actual anchor point, you are able to drag it out and down or out and away. And Illustrator will help you kind of lock two different shapes, right? The problem is just using the Move tool or the uh, Direct Selection tool doesn't make it so I can now make a new shape. It doesn't add anchor points. But I'm going to select these and delete them. So instead, I need to use a new tool to add anchor points. And that tool is the most common tool, the earliest tool in Illustrator. It's called the pen tool. And in many ways, it's the most frustrating, but it's what Illustrator is all about. The pen tool. The pen tool, I will put some nice uh, helpful tips on it <laughs> on, on that slideshow for you. But basically, this is your pen tool cheat sheet, cheat sheet. And we never use the pen tool in Photoshop, but it's there and it comes from Illustrator. So the pen tool, you click to create points and each point will create a straight connecting line. With the pen tool, you can hover over an existing point or anchor, right? And the cursor will automatically change to to the delete anchor point tool. So let's just try those first two steps. So I'm gonna use the pen tool 
and I'm going to just click and then drag and click and then drag and click. And you see how it's with straight lines connecting these points. And because I have my default settings here for fill with no stroke, it's trying to fill as I go. Now it will keep filling until I go back to the original and you'll see that I get a little circle next to the pen tool. That means it's closing the path and making it a closed shape. I'm going to Command Z, get all that away, and let's just look at those tips. So, click to create points. Each point will create a straight connecting line. And you can do this along with me. Okay, what's next? With the pen tool, hover over an existing point and the cursor will automatically change to the delete anchor point tool. So if I hover over, oh sure enough, I can get rid of anchor points. To select and move a point, hold down the command key. This is a really helpful shortcut. And the pen tool will change to the direct selection tool. That's the white arrow, the small <coughs> selection tool. Why is that helpful? Well, if I didn't like where I drew that one and I don't want to delete it, I can hold down command and simply click and move it. And I can do that with any anchor point on any path. <clears throat> What's next? To select and move a handle, hold down the command key and the pin tool will change to the direct selection tool click on the handle and pull or rotate. But we don't know how to get handles yet with the pen tool. So let's go from here to here, right? And this is where the pen tool gets tricky. So this makes straight lines, simple enough. But if I click and pull while still holding down, right? It will create points with Bezier handles that will form curved lines. So let's try that now, click click and pull, and I get handles. Click and pull, I get more handles. And I can adjust those handles by holding down Command and clicking on the, the handles as opposed to the anchor points themselves. Because if I click on the anchor points, it will change their shape. Pretty cool, right? Except you start to get a lot of <coughs> curves very quickly. So I'm gonna Command Z, get past all of that. Ooh. Okay. Next, with the pen tool, hover, hover over an existing line segment and the cursor will automatically change to the add anchor point tool. So that's now where I am with this shape. I want to add an anchor point. So if I use the pen tool and I hover over a line segment between anchor points, I can add a new one. Like for instance, right here. And then if I hold down command, I can drag that out, right? And then I can add a new one here. And if I hold down command, I can drag that out. And I can add a new one here. And if I hold down command, I can drag that out. Okay, the problem are, is these aren't curved, right? They're straight. To make handles from a point that has none, hold down the option key and the pen tool will change to the convert anchor tool, which will change an anchor that only has straight lines going into it into one that has handles and allows for curves. So if I hold down not command, but option, I get an empty arrow. And that is the convert anchor point tool. And then I click and pull, and there we go, I've got curves. Hold down option, click and pull, And I've got curves. But then I might want to add an anchor point. And I might want to hold down command and move it. And then I might want to convert this back into something that doesn't have curves, into a hard edge. To remove handles from a point, <coughs> hold down the option key. The pin tool will change to the convert anchor point tool. Click on the point, the handles will go away. There's actually two ways to do this. One is to hold down option and just click, and then it's a straight line. But you see how it's straight on both sides now? The other way is to 
hold down command and drag one handle in all the way to the anchor point. And that way you can have a one-sided handle, which is pretty helpful, right? If you want to adjust the curve from multiple places, which gives you more control. You guys with me? There's a lot to it. Definitely takes practice, but it allows you to fine tune everything. Right. Now at any point I can double click on this and I can dim the images to 50%, but you'll notice because they're vector shapes, that doesn't really matter. They're not images, right? So instead, if I want to kind of look through it all, I have to select everything and go to transparency and then make the opacity 50%. And that way I can make my black shapes, but see my sketch underneath. And so now just using the pen tool with option and command, you know, the things I've learned, all those options are underneath the pen tool as well here, but it's a lot easier to use the shortcut keys. I can start making this shape work. Ah. And you're gonna get frustrated sometimes, right? So I'm gonna use the anchors that were made just with this rounded rectangle, this simple shape I started with. I can play with the curves, try to get it close. I can um, hold down option and get the convert anchor point and get curves back here and then hold down command and drag this, drag this curve back. This program is really meant to be used with a mouse. It's really hard to be as precise in your clicks when you're using it with a, um, a tablet. And I might want to add an anchor point here and get a little bit of that cheekbone. And drag these handles back. Get that subtle curve. Like that. Move the anchor point. And I'm refining my drawing as I go here. So I have a pretty complicated set of curves now in that and I can work to make it even more refined. I think I like that. I think it's this one I want to smooth a little. Yeah, that looks better. All right, and then I don't necessarily want the top to be perfectly smooth, so I might add, oops, might add an anchor point there. The path has to be selected for you to be able to add. Then hold down Command, drag that down, hold down Option to turn it into something with curves, so I can make it subtly curved. Hold down Command, play with that slight convex curve. There I go. Right now, what about the horns? Well, I can add an anchor point. Then I can go all the way up here, add another anchor point. Whoop, how did I lose my pencil? So add an anchor point, and then hold down Command and drag it out but I want to add two, so I have the horns coming out. Right. So now, hold down Command, drag this out. And I can keep adding anchor points like that, or I can do this. I can just start the horn from this side. Right. Plot some anchors, click and drag here so I get a curve, try to set the curve. get close to it, click and drag here and set a curve, click and drag here and set a curve, 
or discontinue the curve and then close it off 